There are 254 town meeting members, 128 constitute a quorum. We're going to debate and we'll eventually come to vote. So I ask you to support this motion. I see no hands. Am I missing one? Need the community these bring together. I was an elementary school teacher. I, I think what we're hearing two separate issues. Public art's been an important part of this community. I urge you to vote yes on this proposal. Call the previous question. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, please say no. No. We'll have an electronic vote. I move to adjourn. We are adjourned. Hello, uh, I'm Carol Gray. Welcome back to Conversations About Town Meeting. And I am here for the second part of a discussion with Timothy Scalona and Michael Greenbaum. And uh, by the way, I forgot to explain the reason we have a, a shell in the middle of our table is because in the early days of town meeting, in the 1700s, the way they count, called town meeting together was by blowing the, the conch shell. and. Uh, We've progressed from that now. <laughs> um, as a matter of fact, now we're, we're so much in the technology age that we have electronic voting. And uh, Michael, I was wondering, have you seen change differences oh, in, now gosh, that we have yes. electronic voting? What, well, what? It, it profound changes and important changes because yes. one of the issues that people raised about town meeting was the whole question of accountability. How would okay. people know how their town meeting members voted. Right. Uh, you still hear that, but sure. it, it does, it's not germane anymore. There couldn't possibly be a more accountable yeah. body than town meeting. All of the votes, all of the, the substantive votes are recorded and published on the town meeting website. Mm -hmm. Amherst Media, as you said, uh, yep. is there for every meeting. Yep. So it's a very accountable uh, group. But that's only within the past a number of years. That's right. And, and when you just voice votes, I think that was a legitimate criticism, which is why it was changed. And and we did have a system back, what was called the tally vote system. Um, we've, how long were you, have you been in town meeting, Michael? For, 91, since, or 92. Since 92. 92. Wow, that's mm. that's a while. Um, I'm, I'm newer to town meeting, but I've been there oh, about a little, more than a decade. I'm feeling very old right now. <laughs> <laughs> Experienced, <laughs> seasoned. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, but the system before we got electronic voting was that uh, if you wanted to have um, your name, names on votes, you would request a tally vote. And the way you did that was you would stand up and hold, or sit down or stand up and hold up your voting card, um, or a, a pink or a green card, and you would say tally vote. And if there were 15 people that stood with you for a tally vote, then, uh, then we would put names on votes and there would be vote counters. Um, I remember Harry Brooks and Adrian Terezi and a number of people were vote counters and they would go aisle by aisle and get people's, first everybody collect all the green cards, collect all the red cards. So the tally votes, we'd all be given these cards, I think in a set of six red and six green, and they'd have vote numbers on them. And you'd rip off, they'd say, okay, this is vote number three. So if you're agreeing with the motion, you'd rip off green vote number three. Anyway, uh, but so that's all gone now. So now we just, someone says, uh, just electronic vote or doubt it, one person, and then we all press a button. It's but to imagine done. the time that has saved. Saved so it, much time. Each one of those tally votes was close to a half hour. You know, it took a long time <laughs> to collect the cards, count them, it was, validate them. It's true, but it was a good time to talk to your neighbors and yeah. to stretch a little, but, <laughs> <That's true. laughs> but this is much more efficient. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, and as you said, they're all, they're all processed by the next morning. They're all right there. Um, so, uh, so yeah, um, Michael, so your blog has talked about things like accountability as well as representation. And uh, yeah. could you talk about why you uh, see rep town meeting as representative? I saw that. In well, it's, uh, representative is such an interesting word. Yeah. <laughs> because it means it has so many different nuances. Sure. People complain that town meeting members are not representative of their constituents mm -hmm. or don't represent their constituents. Yes. And I say, yes, that's right but they are representative of their constituents. Right. That's why you have 24 people in a precinct, which would be an astonishing number if every one of those 24 had to try to figure out what all of his or her neighbors felt on it. <laughs> a number of issues. So the system was not designed to 
have people represent other people, but to have a large group that was more likely to be representative of mm. their people. And looking at town meeting as a whole, 240 people, is more likely to be representative of the range of opinions and the diversity mm. of experiences in the town than a much smaller body would be. Yes, and, and we also do hear from constituents too. Um, so it, it depends on perspectives. I, I actually, as a town meeting member, uh, see myself as not just you know one person. You know, I'm I'm a parent of a teen in the school system, and I'm you know I have a back. We have many different backgrounds in town meeting. I'm a former public defender, principals, uh, firefighters, um, homemakers, every everything. Lot various teachers, nurses, uh, lots of professors. Anyway, pretty much whatever profession you can think of, uh, and, and students, that's a profession. Um, so we're representative in that way, but, but many of us also feel like uh, we should find out what our constituents think, and we should at least, if we don't always agree with them, we should be in communication with them. And so there are mechanisms now set up for that. Um, could you talk a little bit about how constituents yeah. would reach us if and this they wanted is, this to? This is brand new too, and it's still in the works. I mean, I don't think it's been perfected yet. Yeah. But it is possible now for any any uh, resident in town to contact all of the members from their precinct via email. And they're they're not quite all on the system. Well, that's why I say it hasn't been perfected yet. We're but, still working on getting a hundred percent. But we're sign much up. closer than we were a we year are, ago. We are. We are. And I say I hope that we will continue. And, and some precincts are at a hundred percent. I think precinct eight and well, precinct seven is almost there. So it's just a matter of opting in. And there there are some people that aren't email people. So there aren't people. Yeah. And you want to have yeah. town meeting represent, yeah. you know, people even who don't well, have anyway, email. For for a great many more people now, it is possible to say, yeah. I want. Here are my feelings about uh, right. energy, about sure. schools, about any of the big issues that are coming up before town meeting. That's right. And to let your 24 members mm -hmm. know how you feel. Right. And, and hopefully they will answer you and say, thanks for letting me know. Sometimes they do. Yep. Sadly, I try to sometimes do that. Sometimes they don't. And, uh, I hope more will. Yeah, and you can you can find those um, email addresses for each precinct on the town meeting uh website as part of the Amherst Town Government website. Yeah, and that's important because I think a lot of people find it very difficult to negotiate that town website. I find it difficult. Yes, yes. But it's all there. It's there. And that might be a project for some future group to undertake to make that website more user friendly. Yes, But yes. there's information about all town meeting members and their votes mm -hmm. and how to contact them. And then you can even phone your town meeting members because almost all of us have given our phone numbers to the League of Women Voters. Um, uh, it's, there's a guide called They Represent You. So if you were to Google uh, League of Women Voters Amherst, Massachusetts, They Represent You, you it will bring you to their PDF that, that has all the town meeting members with phone numbers and addresses. So during some controversial votes, I got letters from constituents yep. and I tried to always respond and I got phone calls and yep. um, so I'm, I'm actually happy to hear from constituents. I even know some people who've gone door to door in their neighborhood to find out what are your concerns, what are your questions uh, and uh, but yeah there's differing views. Some people feel like that's not necessarily their responsibility. It's more that you know as a young person or as a uh, an artist or as a whatever your experience is you are representing, you know, part of the broader population. Mm -hmm. um, what, what do you think about things like representation, uh, Tim? Um, I would say representation has been at the forefront of my mind for a long time, even at the local politics level, on campus politics and in the federal government, yeah. state government. But I would say from what I've seen about town meeting is it allows the average person, the the average person to get involved in politics and beyond that anyone from a marginalized community people of color sure. students like myself low income low income persons to get involved in the sphere and to sort of while they have their histories and like if i were to be elected i have my own history too mm -hmm. they would also they would stand for the people in that precinct as far as I, as far as i have been aware of thus far yeah. and because of this because it allows you to have that connection to the people that you are representing and, and so it's not so disconnected as it is in often other institutions. Like for example, I would in the past few years 
it would just, it wouldn't be, I wouldn't feel connected to politicians or governors or like the president or like people in those high positions because they're so far away. Yeah. And it's often, you often feel as if you can't change anything or you can't reach out to them and ask them to change anything for you because your voice is so, it's almost made silent by, as I discussed in the previous segment, the invisible hand that often can control smaller bodies of people that... Money. Is that yeah, what you money. Mean? Money yeah. being the invisible hand. And yeah. sort of makes it so that the average person, it's incredibly hard for someone like me to organize and to become more powerful than the voice that Green, that green can like relay. Yeah. Well, that, that, can I, yeah, please, Michael, jump in. I, di I just wanted to... When, when Tim talks about the average person, I'm not sure there is such a person, but uh, <laughs> exactly. I, I know what you mean exactly. I, it, it occurred to me that one other profoundly useful thing that town meeting allows is for people who aren't comfortable talking in public. I mean, the three of us, right. I suspect, are all fairly comfortable yeah. <laughs> and experienced talking in public. Right. But there are people in town who have very good ideas, who are very serious about issues confronting the town, mm -hmm. but are not comfortable talking in public. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of those people in town meeting. Yeah. And they're not going to be comfortable campaigning. They're not going to do a lot of right. uh, running uh, for office. Mm -hmm. But town meeting has the uh, great advantage of having their voices and their votes yes. in mm -hmm. a context where they can feel more comfortable and as real participants in town and the government. I think that's terribly important. I, I agree with you. It's it's so accessible and you know, some people say you can't buy town meeting. <laughs> so we're there's two hundred and forty of us and, and and it's free to run. And so it, there, it's a huge it's a huge uh, way to have the reaccess to government. And uh, yeah. yeah. Um, you also mentioned about um, people participating in town meeting. Um, We've had a lot of different um, petition articles involving people participating, uh, and sometimes people from the town can come to town meeting, even if you're not in town meeting. Um, are, over the years, can you think of uh, petition articles that you thought really uh, brought a lot of the community into town meeting? A lot, yeah. a lot. And I mean, to me, this is, in general, one of the distinctive features of democratic governance, the right of citizens to petition their government. Yes. And it is one of the hallmarks of town meeting. Everybody finds it aggravating sometimes <laughs> because there can be a lot of petition that does not take, as you say, at spring town meeting, it doesn't take uh, many people ten to, signatures, uh, yeah. to... Ten signatures is all it takes to yeah. get a petition on the floor. And sometimes the petitions are really of quite a special interest, and that's all right. I yeah, mean, yeah. Uh, and sometimes I wish they had been formed a little bit differently. There are too many whereases, and I don't know what to do mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. I, in general, support it, but I don't support all the whereases that you sure. find in a citizen's petition. But still, this is so valuable, and I would hate to lose it. I would hate to lose the ease with which citizens can petition their government. Yeah. And I'm quite willing to endure the aggravation if there is some that that, that presents. Yeah. And we've, we've had some very uh, meaningful petition articles lately. Well, we mentioned the Columbus Day one, but the Net Zero Energy, I believe that was a petition article too. Well, the, 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 some remarkable things happened in the last town meeting in November. Yes. The Net Zero Energy, which was opposed by town boards. That's right. But yeah. citizens said it's time we've got to start biting the bullet on this thing. It's have, have you heard about that? that um, actually, maybe you could elaborate a little more, Michael, what the Net Zero Energy Well, did. it required any town buildings, any public buildings that were going to be built to over... Time, I'm not sure. Well, I think if there were more than a million dollars. Well, to yeah, I mean, there were specifics, and I didn't bring that here with, to remind myself. But they had to not, they, they had to provide the energy that they used, essentially, is what it's saying. Okay. So okay. No, no. And this is a concern of many people because the town is in a spate of building right now. It's trying to build new schools expand a library, build a new fire station, expand public works, all of these public buildings, and they are fearful that this will add to the cost, which it probably will. Mm -hmm. But that came from a citizen's petition, and I was mm -hmm. very glad to support that. Mm -hmm. The effort to improve the North Amherst Library, 
which right. trustees over, since I've been here, 40 years, have neglected. No, no toilets, no ease of access mm -hmm. because there are steps all the way up. Wow. It's in the middle of two very busy roads. Anyway, that was a citizen's petition. And, and, and that was actually brought by a former president of the library trustees, Lord. and so she was Pat Yeah, Holland. there were several she trustees was, in that group. That's right. She was very dedicated to trying to get that building to be handicap accessible and um, add a water fountain for kids and have a bathroom. I mean, it's oh. a charming little library, and there's, there's no restroom right. for the kids right. and, and, and for the adults. But these, uh, and town meeting passed both of these, right. which aggravated some in town because these will all add costs. And it went, so that one, just to, to let uh, the audience know, so the one about the library allowed 50000 for um, a study and design um, prep yep. to then get the ball rolling oh. to actually, uh, and actually a lot of the funding for the actual project could come from what's called Community Preservation Act Committee funds. And the, the, that's called CPA for short. And the CPA is a surcharge that's on property transfers. And uh, it can, a community can vote to have uh, up to 3% of, uh, of this tax on property transfers. So we, we're at the 3% level, which means we have hundreds of thousands of dollars that come in every year that can be used for um, affordable housing, Mm -hmm. That's your, your issue. Um, affordable housing, historic preservation, and preserva preservation of open space and recreation. And so once they get the design work done for the North Amherst Library, that could easily be um, a proposal to the Community Preservation Act Committee for the funds to start doing the work. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't even have to mean increased taxes at all to the community. It doesn't even have to come out yes. of our capital budget. Oh. It can come out of the CPA budget which will just be wonderful. But it raises an interesting question, which does have two sides, and mm. which is a source of the burning debate that's going on in town right now. What is the relationship between town meeting and town boards and committees? Yes. Uh, and part of the reason that some were upset about these votes was that they didn't follow a process that has been established for town committees to deal with capital projects. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and I understand that because I can remember back when I started in town meeting, all of the boards and committees were fighting each other mm. for, for funds. Mm. And the town established what was called a joint capital planning committee, which changed that dynamic and allowed the various boards and uh, town agencies to work together to establish a capital budget. Mm. And, Although I, I, I jump in because I, um, so I served on the, it's called the JCPC, Joint Capital Planning Committee. So as a library trustee, uh, I was a representative from the library to the, the Joint Capital Planning Committee. And so I, I, I heard those arguments in town meeting about why people thought we shouldn't fund that 50000 But this is different because the Joint Capital Planning Committee doesn't handle C Community Preservation Act proposals. In other words, anything that, that's a big capital expense, if it can fit under historic preservation, they pull it off the list and they send it to the Community Preservation Act Committee. So it doesn't, so it's no longer in the whole, um, the whole list of who's going to be funded first in terms of town departments. So I think that um, it didn't jump the line <laughs> in, in the capital budgets, I don't think at all, arguably, because all of those expenses can be paid for out of Community Preservation Act funding. The CPA, um, Community Preservation Act, allows for historic preservation, but it also allows for using the money to have historic buildings become handicap accessible, and a lot of the renovations can be done under that, um, under that uh, prong. So, um, so anyway. Uh, but yeah, but I, I'm saying that the larger, I, that's quite right, yes. but the larger issue of the relationship between town meeting and boards and committees yes. is one of the things that is an engine for the current debate about uh, a new charter proposal, right. which would do away with town meeting. Right. And I think that would be a great shame because I think there is a place in government for both an executive, which has the powers that the select board, the school committee, library trustees have, and a legislature or a legislative type of body, which represents the people of Amherst, which has the obligation of approving 
mm -hmm. uh, expenditures, zoning changes, and other such things that come before it. It makes all of these people have to work together, yep. and that's not always easy. It's not always fun, but it's important, <laughs> I think, for good government. I, I read on your blog the, the Churchill quote you, uh, about democracy. Um, I don't know if you remember it, but I just read it this morning. Uh, Democracy is the worst form. Do you want to say it? You, you, well, it's in your uh, blog. Uh, you said the wor democracy is the worst form of government. The best form. The, the worst, the worst form, form of government, except, except all the for other. all the others. Well, uh, <laughs> no, I think, I think uh, yeah, uh, the, democracy is never settled. I mean, that one of the things about democracy as a basis of government is that it's always evolving and it's yes. always at risk right. because if you give people the vote, a, a, a voice, yeah. they're not going to agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the question then is how do democratic institutions deal with disagreement? Yes, and right. And that is, I think, one of the underlying issues that Amherst is dealing with right now. Absolutely, and I noticed on your blog you have a section on checks and balances, which is kind of what you started to elaborate on. Yeah. Um, I really liked how you went into the history of checks and balances in our country. Could you mention a little bit about that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I could mention a lot about it. But I'm not sure I <laughs> Please, a little. <laughs> no, I mean, I, when I think about Amherst and the questions that voters are going to have to decide in the next couple of months, yeah. I have always enjoyed thinking about the struggle for the Constitution back in 1789 yeah. and the role of the founders in trying to find a way of negotiating the uh, path between the monarchy that they had just th overthrown mm -hmm. and a, the, a popularism which they all feared a little bit. Yes. And how do you do that? Well, they d devised a, a form of what we call checks and balances, and sometimes we use that term too glibly mm -hmm. because it's a very profound idea. But it starts with the idea of that Powers are basically separated. Powers have their delineated sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. But there are also ways in terms of the way they relate to each other that internally they prevent one power or another, the executive, the legislative, the uh, judicial, mm -hmm. from becoming too powerful. Yes. And in the legislature, thanks to James Madison, you have a Senate and a House of Representatives mm -hmm. to keep that in balance. Mm -hmm. it's, it's profound. Yes. And we have a version of that in Amherst right now. Mm -hmm. And I fear that if we are not able to keep it, if we have a more concentration, concentrated power, yeah. that we will lose something that down the road will be a, a great loss and we will regret losing. And could you talk a little bit more about how do checks and balances work in our current form of government with the five-person elected select board and the 240-person town well, meeting? I mean, the first thing to understand is that the select board controls town meetings meeting mm -hmm. and its warrant. Mm -hmm. People are currently complaining that town meeting only meets twice a year, which of course is not true because town meeting committees meet all year. Mm -hmm. uh, last year town meeting met three times because the select board on the basis of citizen petition, mm -hmm. called for a third meeting to deal with the uh, schools issue, which was so controversial. Mm -hmm. Select board can call town meeting at any time. Select board controls the warrant. It controls the language of the articles under the warrant. Mm -hmm. It controls the order in which the articles appear on the warrant. So that's a tremendous power. It determines the budget that it brings to town meeting. Mm -hmm. That's a tremendous power. And the school committee for the schools, the library trustees for the library. So these are real powers, but they're not unchecked powers. The mm -hmm. people have to approve. The people in town meeting <laughs> right. have to approve. Now, people who criticize town meeting forget about all of that earlier stuff, yes. which are the powers of the executive. Yes. Yeah, there have been some people saying that we don't have year-round government. Is What would you say to that? <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that's nonsense. Uh, I'd say that it's nonsense both in the large sense because the people who do that, don't talk about town hall, which works year-round. They don't yeah. talk about the select board, which meets year-round, and the, all the other boards and committees, which meet year-round. Yeah. But even looking at town meeting, now that town meeting is functioning committees, yes. it meets year-round. The warrant reviews and the precinct meetings, or the warrant meetings that you've talked about, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it 
it's just ridiculous to say it. And I know that people are saying it, but it doesn't make yeah. any sense. I remember when I was on Town Meeting Coordinating Committee, we said, well, could we have part of the summer off? <laughs> we, right. we just, do we have to meet right. every week, even right. in the summer? <laughs> but, and certainly the select board meets um, biweekly, is that, and sometimes weekly? Well, that, depending on the issues. I mean, yeah, during yeah. town meeting, they meet every uh, two or three times a week. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, there is no such thing as part-time government in Amherst. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Tim, what do you think about any of these issues? How, um, how does it feel to be coming up to town meeting at this very crucial time and, and hearing all these different discussions uh, in the community? What, what are your impressions? Um, so I think a lot of the issues that are being brought up are a symptom of what is going on in the state and federal governments today. Mm -hmm. And I think, as we were discussing with the upcoming charter, I really feel like democracy isn't supposed to be easy. If it is easy, that's a bad sign because mm -hmm. then you're s sort of devolving into a territory where there isn't as much of a check on the power that you have vested in persons that mm -hmm. have the control. So I have long thought that the way that it's set up now, especially in the town meeting format, allows for a much greater degree of certainty and the stability of the democratic institution as a whole and allows for, as we were discussing earlier, more citizen participation and not as much of, a, of an influence of outside interests. Mm -hmm. But um, what I would also attest to that is the fact that the town meeting body of the 240 representatives is, is largely a, a body of persons who, while they can vote in, based on their own histories or based on that of their constituents, is one that allows for a voice in how the government is supposed to operate and the ability of democracy to survive against the tendency to go towards more, I would say, author authoritarian tactics. Mm -hmm. And I think that's quite unfortunate that there is sentiment to decrease the town meeting, the town meeting body and to vest it in a much smaller body, is I think that just practically eliminates the ability of the average person to truly have an impact on their representatives. Because we were discussing accountability and how while, it, while there's this issue with people that they don't think their representatives are accountable for their interests. But who is to say that if we were to have a much smaller body, that they would actually and truly be accountable. Because you would have, they would be in the spotlight more often, there'll be less of them. But who's to say that they're the interests that are, that are desperately need to be represented are going to be masked in the light of the outside interests or different forces at play. So I really think democracy is safe when it's a larger form in and this way. Just to clarify, so when you talk about a smaller body, you're talking about the existing proposal, which is 13-person city council yeah. instead of the 240-person town meeting and the select board. Um, okay, well, um, we're starting to get towards the, the end of our hour, but um, uh, Michael, do you have other closing thoughts about um, maybe uh, you've been in town meeting a long time. Can you think of a, one of your favorite moments in town meeting story? Oh, uh, well... <laughs> Sorry, putting you on the spot. Let me, Sorry. let me bypass that. Okay, let me tell sure. you how astonished I was when I first came and brought my family to Amherst in uh, hmm. 1970. I was astonished by two things. There were cows over the back fence, and <laughs> we had grown up in cities and suburbs. And, uh -huh. and, cow. and I was astonished by town meeting huh. because, as I had said before, in the towns that I lived in or the cities that I lived in, government was really quite separated from yeah. our daily lives. And to come to Amherst and see this, at first it struck me as absurd. Huh. I didn't really understand it. And I think a lot of people who think that government ought to be in the hand of, of experts and, and so on, don't really understand the empowering nature of the people <laughs> uh, speaking yeah. together. Not agreeing, boy, are there fights on town meeting. And, 
you one, to stop one, us. One uh, last sentence to wrap up. Thank you and good night. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, we'll have more to talk about <laughs> in the next show. And thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for joining us, Tim and Michael. No it's been problem. a great conversation. <laughs>